Creo 4.0, Lesson 1, Part 3. We are going to cover just a small assembly in this lecture. Now, then, using the two parts that we just created. So, I'm going to start off. I'm going to make my screen filled. Click on the top, double click. And basically, if you already have these parts open, that's one thing because they'll be readily available. They're in session. Otherwise, um, I'm going to start off by selecting my working directory. So it's going to go where that set of parts was stored. And then I'm going to open up my couple of my parts. And one of them was the uh, pin, and the other one was the plate. And uh, I'm going to open it up, and then I'm going to close it, and it keeps it in session. And then I'm going to also open up the plate. And I'm going to then close that one also. Now, this is the one that's in session right now, and it's on the screen. It's open, and I'm going to close it. Still in session. <coughs> So, for instance, if I clicked on Open and hit In Session, you'll see that those two parts are here. You can preview the part. Rotate it around. So I'm going to start a brand new assembly this time. I want to make sure I click on Assembly. I'll keep all the defaults. And I think I'll just give it a new name. Since I already have this in the same folder, I'm going to want to repeat the name. It'll tell me I can't use it. Click on OK. And you'll see we're getting our same default datum planes. A couple of things you want to do. Always go over and turn on your tree filters, especially in assembly mode, because it shows the placement folder and the features. Otherwise, nothing is showing besides the components on the model tree over here. Apply. You can see these come up. OK. Also, we'll go up to View, and we'll make sure that these are turned on so that you can see your datum planes. And you can see they're assembly datum planes. Rather than front top right, it's ASM front top right. Same way with the coordinate system in the middle. Now, we're going to add a component, so I'm going to click on Model over here. And we're going to Assemble, because they already exist. And we are in Session, so I could go in Session here. And we want to bring the plate in first. Now, you can see this drag handle here, and you have your 3D capabilities. Rotate the part, whatever. But we're just going to go to the default constraint, which means we're going to put it at the coordinate system to coordinate system. Coordinate system of the part is going to go at the coordinate system of the assembly. We could also get that up here. Click on default. You can see it snaps to that coordinate system. Middle mouse button or check. And we have our first component. I'm going to refit. <coughs> so you can see these go over the top. So it's a little hard to see. We'll open this one up here. So for instance, here's my front assembly. I'm going to right click here. And I'm going to click on Move Datum Tag. And then just click a tiny bit away. And you can see now that they won't go over the top of each other. You could do that to all of them. And probably one of the better ones to do it for is the coordinate system. Because you can see the component and the assembly coordinate system at that point. So the next one we're going to bring in is the pin, Assemble. And again, I'm just going to go in Session open up the pin, and it's going to put it on the screen here. And again, I can use me my 3D dragger and go anywhere I want with this. I can rotate stuff. Basically, I want to put this pin shaft in this hole. And one way to look at this a little cleaner is I can shut off all my datum features because I don't want to select them. The other thing, if I want to, I can go down here. I can hit F11, or go down to the very bottom left-hand corner and make this full screen. 
like so. So it's much easier to see everything on your screen now. Remember, if you put your cursor up here, you will see the ribbon. If you put it over here, you're going to see the model tree. Put it on the bottom, you're going to see the information that you're contacting back and forth, talking to the system. It's going to be putting the information down there for you. So basically, we want to select this service here. And by having the datum plane and everything off, you won't accidentally pick the wrong thing. So we're just going to pick the surface and pick the other surface. And then we're going to pick the end surface here and the front face. Now, what that did was, if I go up here and I open up my placement, I have coincident, which is like an automatic, the shaft went in the hole, and then I kept going, and it automatically toggled to the next one. Now, I can remove all these and start again. And I'm just going to move this one over here. So basically, if you have this open, you can see it happen a little bit. It's on automatic. And I'm going to select this surface. And I'm going to select this surface. And it snaps in there. And you can see this one is completed. Now, here, since this is open, I can use my right mouse button and say I want to collect a, another. So I can go to a new constraint. Or I can click on new constraint here. But if this is closed, you can just keep going. You do shaft to hole and then front of the face to the front of the plate. So the end of the pin and automatic here. Now, it makes it coincident. If I put my cursor over the top, I get some suggestions of what I want to use, commands. I can go over here to coincident, and I want to turn it into distance. And I want to drag this out. Actually, I want to drag it out to half an inch. And yes, I could type that in up here if I wanted to, or type it in here, or double click on here and type it. So middle mouse button or check will complete the assembly. And I'm going to hit my F11 key so it takes it back and see all my ribbon and all my model tree. I'll turn on my datum planes. So this is the assembly. Now, one of the things we can look at, add a little bit content here. I'm going to go over to the View tab and Model Display, and I'm going to click on Temporary Shade. So it temporarily removes everything. If I refit, nothing happens. But if I repaint, you'll see that happens. And the right mouse button, I'm going to go into Standard Orientation, which is a trimetric right now. Now, if I wanted to, I can go over under my Options File options and I can look at my model display and I could turn the triometric into isometric. Apply if I want to see it and then click OK and click on no. You want it to always start in triometric and there's a reason for that and we'll go over it later. It, it, the datum planes look kind of funny and they're hard to, to visualize if you have it in triometric I'm sorry if you have it in isometric when you start off an assembly or a part. But once you've got a feature on there, it doesn't make any difference if it's a component or a feature, going into the isometric gives you a little bit better view. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to hit my Control-1 key, and it'll turn it into shading with reflections. Here we have shading with edges. Here we have shading. F4 is no hidden line or hidden line. So. Control 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We could also change that by using these. So we have shading with reflections, and we have shading with edges going all the way down. Normally, you never work in wireframe. No reason to. And again, we'll go back and we'll temporary shade, and we will refit. And I'm going to hold down my Shift key and my middle mouse button and slide this up so we can see it a little bit better. And again, the Control key, along with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, will toggle between the different types of shading and 
hidden line, no hidden line wireframe. This concludes part three of lesson one.